Okay, so if you, like me, were a child in the 1980s, you may have read some of these Choose Your Own Adventure books. And I was a big fan of all the branching decision trees. And hey, it turns out it's actually kind of useful for our careers, right? Choosing between bad and worse. Like, how many times have you ended up with the GRU? Like, I feel like every time I'm making technical decisions, it's like, hmm, exactly how bad is this going to be? Let's find out. It's probably fine. So when I'm, when I'm trying to make these decisions, like say, cloud providers. Hey, I work for Microsoft by now. Uh, by now, some of you may know. Uh, I work for Microsoft now, and so you should all try Azure. But when you're making these sorts of decisions, you're you're trying to figure out what's best for you. If you're, say, moving out of your data center and you're pretty sure you need some containers because you've been told you need some containers, perhaps you should think about what problem are you trying to solve? And they are a means to an end. So like adding complexity that isn't going to actually buy you anything isn't going to help. Same with if you decide to split up into two pizza teams. Like, first of all, like how hungry are these teams? And how much pizza is each person? How big are these pizzas? But also, like, not every single person wants cheese or gluten or, you know, meat. So, like, when you're collaborating with people and trying to figure out exactly where all of the interconnected parts of your organization are and uh, the inter interconnected parts of your code, too, like, you're trying to figure out, should we worry about um, this particular failure state or that particular failure state, where all these dependencies are? And I feel like... Yeah, I mean, the answer is probably yes, you should be worried all the time. But also, like, think about failure states. Everything is not the happy path. Like, everyone loves to YOLO something out to production because apparently we all are supposed to be full stack. And, like, if you're fabbing chips one day and then deploying the JavaScript framework of the week the next day, like, that's cool if that's what you want to do. Maybe some people want to specialize more than that, and that's not, it, it is probably fine. On the other hand, you know, as a long-term ops person who um, spent plenty of time on call for production, uh, I don't like the idea of hiding complexity from people if it does matter for them. Like, they probably should know that their endpoint shouldn't say 200 OK all the time. Um, because if we're going to try to ha have everybody be full stack enough to, like, say, put people on call for their own application, they need the support um, of the teams that are maybe maintaining the underlying platform. Uh, and also, like, I feel like we have a lot of terms in DevOps that are maybe slightly overloaded and kind of ridiculous. I should just point out that uh, Patrick Dubois called it DevOps days because Agile Systems Administration he deemed too long for a conference name. So um, I feel like when we're, when we're trying to create this culture of collaboration across our organizations, the word DevOps can also make people feel like, yeah, but I'm in product or QA. I got, like, news for you. I rolled up through marketing for the last two years. So, like... It, you're probably, if you're thinking, like, we're really focused on, like, that developer experience, yes, but also the site reliability, yeah, okay, that sounds great. That does not mean you need Google infrastructure for everyone else who is exactly like Google. Like, you're probably not. And when you're deciding what's right for your infrastructure, I think it's also really important to think about the failure states, but also think about minimum viable. Like, you don't necessarily need to... YOLO everything out into production just because it exists in the world. Like, you're not required to take whatever's on the front page of Hacker News and, like, put that in production tomorrow. I got news for you. Like, it's not required. You can make something that is small because you're probably going to have to change it. You're, the, um, the places where we add complexity to our infrastructure for resume-driven development reasons are probably not helping our organization now. They're definitely not helping the people who inherit that from us. So, and they're also making it a little more difficult. If you think about it, um, day one is awesome when you've shipped and you're like, that's great. And day two to day N, which hopefully is possibly until the heat death of the universe, somebody has to maintain that code in production. Um, also like, when you've decided that you're going to add a new language to your stack or you're going to, you know, uh, go multi-cloud or whatever it is you're trying to do, just remember that every single piece of complexity you add, somebody has exciting new troubleshooting to do at 2.30 in the morning. And as humans, we jump to conclusions and we use patterns that we remember and we have to make decisions fast. It's difficult to be a human and trying to interface with machines. So remember that. Remember that the people you're interacting with are a lot more important than doing it exactly right, and that's definitely more important. Or sorry, 
And that's definitely more important than you know your like tool choice because you're all people. Go to open space, talk to each other. Thanks.